Hi everyone, this is Rad Drew. I'm out at Delaware Lake here at um, Fort Benjamin Harrison uh, State Park here in Indiana, just that's on the edges of Indianapolis. It's a, a beautiful late afternoon here and um, I wanted to just go through some of the things that I'm learning with the new iPhone 12 Pro Max. Um, uh, many of you have heard that the um, the new operating system that enables uh, some of the uh, new features in this phone is going to be released on Monday. Uh, and um, I've been fortunate to have a beta copy of the software for a couple of weeks now. So I'm running 14 uh, version iOS 14.3. Uh, and the, the main thing that that uh, operating system is enabling with the new phone is the use of a new file format called Pro Raw. Uh, it's uh, been introduced by Apple, and like many raw formats, it, it contains a lot more data than our than our compressed JPEG files. And combined, you hear that plane going over. I don't know how, how loud that is. Uh, combined with the other computational photography going on in the camera, including things like deep deep fusion. Um, it really allows us to, to process these images in such a way that we're, we're really able to get a lot of uh, detail and uh, uh, just a, a much better image. And the remarkable thing is that we're able to process these. They're still the raw files, so they have to be processed a little differently than our JPEG files. And there are, are special tools that you need for that. But the, the iPhone editor that comes with the... Um, you know, the, the, the when you look at a, a, an image in your camera roll and you edit it, that's the iPhone editor. And it has gotten so good these days. And it is especially um, a, a, adapted to, to processing these pro raw files. The other tools that you can use include things like Snapseed. It has a, a, a raw editor in it. Um, it's I don't know that it's been updated yet to um, see everything that's in a pro raw file, but it will recognize pro raw as a DNG or a raw file that it will let you process in Snapseed. The other tool that's really good is Lightroom for mobile, and it has a raw uh, processor in it that's very similar to the processor that you get when you have uh, Lightroom on your desktop. And if you don't subscribe and you don't want to pay for this, you can get a free version of Lightroom for your mobile phone um, that will allow you to do a lot of this processing. The thing is, um, Lightroom has not yet been updated to accommodate the all the uh, data that's in a pro raw file. You can still process it as a raw file. It'll recognize it as a raw file, but hopefully um, uh, Adobe will be updating Lightroom Pro pretty soon to um, to, to look for the things that we can get out of the, this pro raw format. So what we're looking at right now is the, the, the uh, native camera info, uh, interface on the iPhone. Let me just back up a little bit here. It's this interface, it's the standard native camera, the gray icon here up in the upper left corner. When I tap on that, you can see the interface here. It looks very similar to the interface in the 11 Pro and even the 10. What's different, you'll notice there's a little button up there that says RAW. And I can tap that to turn it off or tap it to turn it on. Now, you're not, you may not be seeing that yet because it's the new iOS that enables that feature. So once, once it rolls out on, on Monday, um, I encourage you to try it. By the way, I've been using this uh, for, well, 14.3 has been out for about four days. Before that, it was 14.2.3, I think. I haven't had any other problems with other apps and nothing major. So, I mean, I know I often wait a while before I uh, will try a new iOS, but in this case, I wanted this one early and I can tell you that I have not had any issues with it. So I would, I'd encourage you to go for it um, when it comes out on Monday. Uh, the other thing that you'll need to do, we're looking at the interface, but in order to enable RAW, you have to turn on a few things in your settings. So I am going to uh, go to my camera settings here, go to settings, and I'm going to scroll down until I come to uh, camera. It's down here, way down here. There it is. And I'm going to tap on formats. And until you get the new... Um, iOS installed, you won't see this same uh, list of options. I have high efficiency selected, and then down below, you'll notice you, you see the Pro Raw option, and I have that turned on. 
So it tells you that ProRAW is a 12-bit file that uses the linear DNG format to retain more information and dynamic range in the file, providing additional flexibility when editing exposure and white balance. And each of these files is about 25 megabytes in size. So the, there's a lot of goodness in there that we can extract with our processing. So I'm going to tap on the camera and go back and go back to the native camera. And I just want to take a couple photographs out here. Now, for those of you who are video files, and, and uh, uh, I, I'm aware that I'm shooting in the, uh, the, the vertical format here rather than horizontal, but I'm using the uh, Apple's recorder that's in the phone, and it does better uh, in the, this uh, vertical orientation. So uh, forgive me for that. Um, so you can see we've got our three lenses here. There's the wide angle, the ultra wide, 13 millimeter. There's the uh, the wide, which is uh, 50 or uh, 20. Let's see, 26. And then the new one here is. It used to be 52, and it's now 65. Look how close we're getting. I mean, I'm looking all the way across the lake here. I don't know what that distance is, but there's there's the uh, 26 millimeter, and there's the 65 millimeter. I mean, it's really quite a dramatic difference. And so I'm going to leave it on the, the 1X right now. I really like these reflections of the clouds in the sky here. And I'm just going to tap in the center. And it, all of this operates the same way. You tap to focus and, uh, and set your exposure. And then you can drag your finger up and down on the screen here to uh, ex set your uh, exposure values. The other thing you can do, and this is, was new with the 11, or I, I guess it was new with the uh, iOS 13, I think. You see where it says up there, it says... Uh, plus 0 0.3. If I tap on that icon, I now have a little dial down here and I can dial my exposure uh, with my finger on this dial rather than sliding up and down on the screen. It's kind of a nice uh, addition. Um, some, sometimes I have trouble getting, that, getting the, uh, my finger on the screen and this dial helps with that a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust my exposure for this. We can also, if I'm going to take several shots here, I can also hold my finger on the screen and lock the auto focus and auto exposure. So now I can move around here and take several shots with those same settings without, um, without having to reset them. So I'm gonna go ahead at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and tap the shutter and take, I'll take a couple here of the same and maybe I'll, I'll try some with a different, a uh, little bit different exposure value. And I wanna show you now, once we've taken this photo, Again, like I said, you could process in, is this in Snapseed. You could process this in Lightroom Mobile. There are a couple other tools. There's On One has a raw editor. Um, there's one called, um, uh, what is it called? Um, raw Power. And these are okay. I, I find Lightroom to be probably the best, but Lightroom hasn't yet been updated, at least as of today, to recognize all of the, the stuff that's in a Pro Raw file. So the best editor that I've found right now is to go to the camera roll. Let's go out here and look at those images. And let's take that last one we took. And I'm going to go up here and tap on the edit button. And it's going to bring us to the, the Apple's editor um, in, the, in the tool. Now, years ago, I don't think anybody used the Apple editor very much. It just wasn't very, very robust. Excuse me. Um, but with the introduction of iOS 13, this tool became phenomenal. And so I'm going to show you one of the ways that I like to process things here. The first thing I'm going to do is tap on this little magic wand, which is the auto button. Now, the auto button, watch what it, just that one tap is going to make some changes in the image. It looks like it darkened it a little bit. But now I can go and I can accept those the way they are, or I can continue across here and just... I can brighten my exposure a little bit. I can, um, got something called brilliance here, which is going to affect that brightness area. I've got highlights, and I might drop those highlights to bring out some detail in the sky. Actually, I'll you know, drop them down by going to the right, and you can see that I'm bringing out some detail in the sky. Not unlike working in Snapseed, where you drop your highlights down. Then we can go to shadows, and if I want, I could, I could lift the shadows a little bit, and make that uh, the forest edge a little brighter. Or I, 
bright, brighten it up like that. So there it's now at about 100%. I kind of like that actually. I can go to contrast and if I want I can I can play with the contrast just a little bit. I have uh, a little more brightness I can adjust there. I'm going to tone it down and then my black point um, is all the way at 100. I could either reduce that a little bit or I could leave it kind of like it very dark like that and then I'm going to go to saturation and I might just increase my saturation a little bit and then I'm into my vibrance here I might give that just a little bump I've got warmth if I wanted to warm it up a little bit I could do that bring that little yellow strip of, of shoreline into uh, more figural and then I can do with, deal with tints here then sharpness, I'm going to take my sharpness up maybe to 25, and you can zoom in on your image here and, and watch what's happening. That may be a little too much. Back it off a little bit. Then I've got definition, which is similar to structure and Snapseed and other tools. And noise reduction, typically what I do is try and zoom in on my sky. And honestly, I'm not seeing a lot of noise to deal with. But if I did have noise in the sky, I've got a tool to help me reduce that. And then the last tool on the end here is a vignette. So if I did want to uh, create a, a slight vignette, very subtle one, very gentle one, kind of like that. Um, to me, the best vignettes are the ones that are sort of subliminal. You don't even know they're there. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and tap done. Before I do that though, I wanted to show you down below here, you have these three overlapping circles in the center. And if I tap on that, I've got all these different presets that I can select for the image that are already, uh, already there. Un not unlike presets that we see in other tools. And you can always choose one and then go in and tweak it to your heart's content with the editing tools. Um, I actually kind of like that vivid. Um, I might go ahead and accept that and whoops, go back to my editing tools and I might want to go down back to um, maybe my brightness and darken it just a tiny bit. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and tap done on that. And now here is our image. You notice it still tells us it's a raw file. And here it is. Um, and look at just look at how clean and sharp and beautiful that is. Um, and I want to remind you, this is an iPhone. It's pretty really crazy. I'm just stunned by it. So anyway, that's that. I just wanted to show you uh, how this new editor and this new Pro Raw is working. Um, look forward to it on Monday. Um, again, I've not had any issues with it. Um, in terms of things not working or it being problematic in some way. So I encourage you to, to go ahead and, and, uh, and um, give it a shot when it comes out on Monday. I think you'll be really delighted with the added um, capability that you have with uh, the activation of Pro Raw. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you'll uh, check out my uh, YouTube channel and uh, visit my website. And uh, maybe I'll see you... Uh, in a webinar in the future or maybe even in person on a trip one of these days soon. Thanks.